Yo, welcome in YouTube. My name is Sweet Phil. Today right here, I'm going to go over a quick guide to how to craft and how to get all the materials for crafting. And then I'm going to go over my absolute favorite crafting recipes, both for early on in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And then later game, when you're going to do a ton of these, or you might do a ton of these in order to get some absolutely godly items. So to start off, I'm going to go over to get the four things that you need for crafting. You need a random jewel. You need a gem. You need a particular rune and you need a particular item or things in order to craft here in Diablo 2 Resurrected. I'm going to go over the first two things together here, the random jewel and the particular gem that you're going to need. They're kind of the easiest to get just finding along the way. Like I said, you just need any random jewel. So you can find these anywhere if you're just following people along with bail runs. You can grab a jewel that you find in normal and just hang on to it or in nightmare or any difficulty the level of the jewel does not matter you grab any random jewel usually i might keep two or three in my stash just for when i want to go ahead and craft that way i always have one waiting there for me gems are kind of the same way obviously maybe you can get some perfect gems or some good flawless from your forges hell forge and nightmare forge or you can kind of just find flawless gems all over the game. Of course, you cube three of those flawless gems together and it'll cube up to a perfect version of that gem. There isn't necessarily any particular place to farm these super great or super way better than any other place. But I mean, I guess hell cows and nightmare cows are usually a good place to farm for gems if you're really looking for them. A lot of times people are just too lazy to even bother picking up gems so if you're following a chaos game or a bail game you can usually just run around and pick them up and like i said everyone just leaves them laying around sometimes now for the other two things i'll go over the runes first here there's a super easy way to get any of these runes all you have to do is go and kill the countess time after time after time every single time you kill the countess she will drop runes almost every time that is i know there is the rare occasion that she doesn't drop any runes and that's very disappointing but actually for crafting, you can get all of the runes that you need for any of the different recipes from Nightmare Countess or from Hell Countess. And you can even get a lot of them from Norm Countess, but you can't quite get all of them. So it's super easy to get the items you need for crafting. Uh, a lot of times, maybe early, early on, because it'll be a lot cheaper, you can come over to just any random vendor. And maybe hopefully you can find them in here, the particular type of item that you need in order to craft. Check around all different kinds of vendors. Maybe you could find it there because it will be significantly cheaper to buy like, we'll say this belt here for 1600 when you gamble stuff, it's going to be tens of thousands of gold. But later on, the best way that you can find any single item that you need, head over to Geeds here and gamble or any gambling person there is in this game. And obviously you got the refresh button and you can search and search and search and search for the item that you eventually need. And it is also cool because you can buy multiples of the same item it never goes away so if you find let's say these boots right here that you're going to craft with you can buy a bunch of them and go ahead and craft you don't have to search too long for that item also it is important to mention too the item level on the specific item not the jewel don't need to worry about anything about where the rune drops or anything like that but the specific item you're crafting with that will determine what can roll on the item besides what's on the crafting recipe so the example that I know the best and I can use is for amulets. So in order to get two to any character skill on an amulet you craft, you need that amulet to roll eventually with over level 92. Now that takes into a combination of your character level and the level of the item. Now the item level will be the level that the monster that dropped it at, but like I mentioned in this video, you gamble everything in order to craft with. So that means the gambled item will be the item level based off of your character level. Now, in a lot of this stuff, the item level that will end up being on the item that you craft or the item you gamble, it'll kind of fall within a range that you can't tell exactly what it is. But for, say, an amulet, you want your character to be up around level 90, 92 in order to be able to gamble amulets that are high enough level in order to roll with the two to skills. I obviously can't explain for every single item it would take 75 days to do that. I just did want to mention that before we get started here. Alrighty, here we are now back in game, and you can see right above my head here, the first one I'm going to mention to you is the blood headgear. And for this one, you need either a helm, a cask, or an armament. You need any jewel, you need a rail rune, and a perfect ruby. So, I'm going to go ahead and craft one up here for that real quick. Throw in the perfect ruby. 
we need the rail rune right here and any jewel and we'll craft one up and i'll show you early on this is a good budget option i like to put on an act two mercenary unfortunately this just rolled with one to life and i am doing this on a high level character if you're early on you probably won't be able to get 48 to life it might be lower but with the cube recipe here you see you do get 10 to 20 life on it every single time i got the lowest roll unfortunately on the life leech but that is a good way early on to get some life leech on your mercenary along with the other stuff that can roll on it like any resistances and things like that so don't sleep on this for your melee characters or for your act 2 mercenary Alrighty, next we're going on to a blood belt and all these blood recipes as you can see are going to be good for the melee characters and you're going to want to know these if you're trying to melee character because melee characters can really struggle in diablo 2 resurrected they're not as powerful as the casters so for this one right here you see you need a belt a mesh belt or a mithril coil and obviously the jewel the tal rune and a perfect ruby so we'll throw that in here the tal rune and the gem and we'll go ahead and craft this one up for you you can see I got the life leech, you get the open wound, which is good to get, and of course all the stuff that can, you can get on rare belts you can get on this kind of stuff too. You can see I get, you get the life, but also I got strength and cold resistance. So you always get the life leech, always get the hit points, always get the open wounds. Um, see this is another great option for the melee characters if you can't find a string of ears early on or a dango or any other type of good uh, belt that is rare. You can always craft one of these up to help your melee character out. Now we'll jump on to the next blood recipe here. And these are the blood boots. Now these are actually very interesting because they're one of, if not the only way in the game to get life leech or any kind of leech for that matter on a boot. You have to have a light plate, battle boots or mirrored boots. Obviously the jewel and ethrune and the perfect ruby. Let's throw that in here and I'll show you crafting these up right here. Oh, and this is a great example, too, because getting faster walk run on the boots. Awesome. You can get that. Um, I didn't get any resistances, unfortunately, but you can see it's awesome to get the life leash on boots along with some life. So later on, you could get the water walks or sand some treks or there's a bunch of different options later on. But early on, making a pair of these, getting life leech on a boot and hopefully getting resistances, walk run, hit recovery, stuff like that. This is going to really boost up your character early on when you make these. Next, move on to the Blood Ring. Once again, another way to get Life Leech on your character if you need it, if you need boosting up at your ring position here. So, you need any magic ring. I just went over and gambled one from Geeds once again. A jewel, a soul, and a perfect ruby. Toss that in there. Boom. This one's not too bad. 50 to life. Got some strength. It didn't get any resistance resistances unfortunately you can get other stuff on this like faster cast rate or it could roll with mana leech on it as well or even more life leech depending on your character level obviously but it's good to get you know more strength on this as well this got the max of five it could roll with even more or with dexterity and like i said resistances and all that kind of stuff anything that could roll on a rare ring you could get on this one right here too now we'll scoot over to the next one here and that is the blood amulet you can see right up here with the blood amulet you need any magic amulet a jewel and almond rune and that perfect ruby let's go ahead and throw that in there and see what we can get on this one i have a high level character so it could be something really gg if we got lucky unfortunately nothing too crazy here but this is something maybe you could actually get early on getting faster walk run on an amulet this is one of the only ways you can i forget if it's cat's eye or something it's a unique amulet with faster walk run but you can actually craft up an amulet that has faster walk run here and it'll roll with hit points the faster walk run and the life leech every time and then you can obviously get all the other stuff this one got 15 to dexterity which getting stats is always great and you could get things like faster cast rate you could get one or two to a character skill and you can get all the resistances too. The next one we're going on to is caster gear, but actually this is gonna be a little switch up here because even though it's a caster recipe, this is actually one that I don't want you to sleep on for your melee characters early on. It's not gonna make anything godly for end game gear, but sometimes early on you can struggle to find things that have mana leech on them. So you can actually make a mana leech helm with this caster recipe. And you need any mask, a death mask or a demon head a jewel, a nephron, and a perfect amethyst. And you can see right there, there is one to four mana leech on this, along with mana and mana regen. 
So we'll throw this in here right quick and I'll show you. This one, once again, only rolling with one Mana Leech, but like I said, sometimes early on it can be tough to find Mana Leech if you can't find that Mana Leech ring or an amulet or some awesome, unique, obviously you're not going to have early on. You could craft one of these up and get some Mana Leech along with obviously a bunch of different things to help out your energy, uh, mana regeneration, and you get mana on that along with, like I said, that Mana Leech. So the next one we'll go on to is Caster Gloves. You need Leather Gloves, Demon Hide Gloves, or the Bramble Mitts, any Jewel, an Ort Rune, and a Perfect Amethyst. And you can get faster mana regen mana, and actually mana per kill, which early on can really benefit your character because you're going to be killing a ton of monsters, and you don't have that much mana. So we'll go ahead and throw these in here real quick and craft it up for you. On here, I enhance defense, not too bad. It's kind of cool, look at two to mana after each kill early on. That can really help your character out when you're casting a spell for 10 or 15 mana, but you're killing four or five or six or seven monsters with that skill, but your mana pool is quite small. This can really help you out, along with getting faster mana regen and mana on those gloves. You can see here, actually, I got two different resistances, fire and poison as well. That can obviously help out your character a lot too. Now I'll go with one for the casters that I recommend all the time early on because there's only one other belt in the game that you can have faster cast rate on, that's Arachnid's Mesh. You're not going to be finding that for a long time, but early on you can make this as early as late normal if you can get yourself a perfect amethyst. You can see right up above me here, you need a light belt, shark skin belt, or the vampire fang belt, and you can get... Regenerate mana 4 to 10% the mana and the big one the big one the big one the big one the one you need the 5 to 10% faster cast rate That's really gonna help out any caster early on The belt slot early on is gonna be real weak for you I guarantee it it's tough to find a good option here You can get faster cast rate with just the Ithrune, the jewel any amethyst and that belt Let's go ahead and craft it up for you and I'll show you this one got 6% faster cast rate and just like all the other stuff that I've said, you can get resistances, even magic find or gold find here. Uh, you get the mana and the mana regen. You could get some other stuff too. Unfortunately, I didn't on this one. That's the thing with crafting. You never how, know how it's going to roll. But getting that faster cast rate early on is going to be game changing for you. So next we'll move on to an absolutely amazing crafting recipe. And if you do enough of these and get lucky enough, this could literally make one of the most powerful items in the entire game. I am not exaggerating here. You could hypothetically with this get two to character skill, which you can get if you're a high enough level. You could get up to 20% faster cast rate, a ton of strength, a ton of dexterity, resistances on it, magic find, all kinds of crazy stuff. No doubt you can get the best amulet in the game, but quite possibly the most powerful item in the entire game. And don't sleep on making one of these early either because it's a super easy way to get faster cast rate on an amulet. You can see here you just need any magic amulet, a jewel, Ral rune, and the perfect amethyst, but you see down at the bottom there, 5 to 10% faster cast rate on every single amulet. You said, what up, Phil? You said you could get up to 20. Well, on the crafted recipe, you can get 5 to 10, but amulets can roll with up to 10% faster cast rate as well. So when you roll it, you can get the 5 to 10, and then on top of that, another 10, so you can get up to 20% faster cast rate. You can also get some crazy amounts of stats, like I said, the strength and dexterity. And of course, you get the mana regen and mana on it as well. Let's roll one of these up. I have a very high level character here, so we could get lucky here on the video. Uh, we do not, but imagine rolling this with your paladin. And also, you see that it actually got 8% mana leech as well. But if you can't roll these with a high level character, you notice the level requirement up there is level 88. So you're going to have to be pretty high to use this, and that's actually because of the mana leech that rolled on it. Everything else on here you can get on a much lower character. But 1 to Paladin skills, 5% faster cast rate, which is unfortunately the minimum that you could get on one of these caster amulets. But you still get cast rate, and you get a skill to character skills. You could get 2, like I mentioned. 14 to all res is real nice to get on an amulet, and it's got the 8% mana regen. So you can really see the possibilities with this. This isn't particularly the most godly GG, but like I said, you can see the possibilities of getting the best item in the game with this crafting recipe. And now we're on to hit power crafted recipes here, and we have hit power gloves. These are great because they can actually roll with 
javelin skills, bow skills, and the martial arts skills. I'm not a big martial art assassin player. In fact, I've only ever dabbled like in the very beginning in normal. So I don't know if hit power is really going to be great for it. But the thing that makes these hit power gloves unique, they actually have knockback on them. And it's good, in my experience, for boazons early on. It can add a bunch of safety. Hit knockback can be kind of annoying for regular melee characters like barbarians and paladins. But it can be very useful for, like I said, safety-wise for hunting big mobs of monsters with boazons because it'll constantly knock back if you do multi-shot arrow it'll knock back all the monsters that it hits keeping those monsters at bay and on top of knockback you can see it adds a little bit of damage to attack and a chance of casting frost nova it is cut off a little bit my apologies on the example i got up there but we'll go ahead and craft one of these up and i'll show you hopefully i get super lucky here huh in the video it does not get any of the skills but it can also get increased attack speed you can see these actually have a bunch of magic find making them you know obviously a good magic finding glove for a amazon with the knockback and like all the other stuff obviously you can get resistances on it as well and things like that so there is another crafting recipe safety stuff but i don't think any of that's super good i think you can actually shop better items just straight from vendors to be honest if you disagree with me, head down in the comment section. Let me know any crafted recipes you think I missed and I should have added to this video. Huge shout out to all the channel members. With your support, you make making videos and streaming on this channel possible. Just throw that like button for me if you liked the video and subscribe up so you never miss any of the Diablo 2 Resurrected content. Peace out, YouTube. Hopefully I catch the next video or on the next live stream. Hey, don't forget, keep slaying.